The following people who are being interviewed have one of the following phobias, and they are arachophobia, which is a fear of spiders, and this phobia affects women more than men. Then there is acrophobia, which is a fear of heights, and this fear can lead to anxiety attacks and avoidance of high places. Pedicophobia, which is a fear of gorillas, and this phobia has become almost pandemic. Melissophobia, which is a fear of bees, and mainly children can be a victim of this, while, while either playing outside or just in their childhood. Claustrophobia, which is a fear of situations in when which escaping is really difficult, and approximately one-third of people with panic disorders develop this phobia. Ophidophobia, which is a big fear of snakes and often attributed to evolutionary causes, personal experience, or cultural influences. And lastly, there is colophobia. So, what is a phobia? Um, a phobia is a subcategory of the what we call anxiety disorders so a phobia um, is pretty much excessive fear um, of something <laughs> um, there's different types of phobias um, there's there could be a specific phobia to something like um, blood or um, agoraphobia for example is a, another type that that means being afraid of being in a certain situation or a room where you'll be embarrassed or you can't get out of. Um, that's another type of phobia. Or there's um, social phobia. So people that you know can't really perform in, in front of others or are afraid that something will happen um, in, in a social setting. So there's all those types of difference and each one of them has even more sub subcategories but in general that's what it is so it's just having excessive fear about something usually these people go into kind of panic mode and they kind of um, will have some of the panic symptoms uh, when they're kind of dealing with whatever it is that they're um, that they fear um, how does a phobia develop um, usually phobias develop at a young age a lot of times they develop in childhood um, or adolescence um, and it can be due to maybe trauma, you know, something horrible that happened and then they just start being really afraid of whatever happened and it just kind of gets worse or it could be kind of modeled in a way by the way parents or other adults or people react um, around them, so like a learned behavior. Um, or just overall, it's usually an experience of some sort, you know, being really afraid at some point in time. So like a kid who has a phobia uh, of needles, you know, they'll like think back to like when they were like five years old and getting shots and it was so traumatic that they developed this phobia, stuff like that. And how do you treat a phobia? Phobia is like any anxiety disorder is treated um, usually by teaching relaxation skills is kind of like the beginning of it just kind of identifying exactly what it is that um, is um, creating this fear um, and then going on to relaxation skills and then um, people usually treat it by doing um, some work in, in imagination and then exposure so it can be exposure you know in session in therapy or eventually it goes into exposure so exposing the person to their fear to their phobia um, little by little so in little steps from something that causes a little bit of fear to to the big huge problem whatever phobia that they have so it's it's a pro process of um small increments um, of, you know, teaching how to relax and then eventually getting to a point of um, being able to face that fear. So it's usually done with exposure therapy, combina combination of um, cognitive um, behavioral therapy. Um, I have a phobia of gorillas. Um, it started like a while back ago when I went to the San Diego Zoo when I was little. Um, uh, I walked up to like, a, like its cage and I seen it and it was like huge. It was like six foot. Like it was so big. And I looked. 
I have a phobia of heights. Uh, I start freaking out uh, when I get up really high. What I do to control it is I close my eyes or and I just take deep breaths. But uh, what really happens is I start panicking, I start shaking, I get really, really sweaty. And that's my phobia. Um, technically, I'm arachnophobic, but I'm not scared of spiders. I'm just scared of tarantulas. Uh, I don't know why, like, I'll be, I'll be scared of a non-poisonous tarantula, but I won't be scared of a, like, a lethal black widow. Uh, I hate it when there's a spider in my room, and then I look away, and it's not there anymore, and then I have to find it, and I'm scared for the rest of the night. Uh, this one time, I was in the bathroom, and I was peeing, and I saw a spider, and I killed it with my pee, like the spray of it. That's pretty much all I have to say. I have a phobia, and it's of heights. And when I go to high places, I cry. And I go to my mom, and then I close my eyes until the height is over. Now, I stay on the ground where I belong. Okay, when I was on the plane, like, I was cool. And then, like, it started going, and I was like, and then I freaked out. And then, like, started shaking. And then my brother was trying to scare me. He's like, look at the window. I started to look at the window and it got higher and higher and higher. So I didn't see the ground no more. So then I started crying and then I had to move because of the pilot or whatever. So then I had to go sit by my mom. So we had to switch seats and everything. And I sat by my mom and I closed my eyes and I finally went to sleep. And then when I woke up, it was over. My phobia is bees. When I was younger, the, this bee started chasing me in, a in the playground when I was in my, uh, in my elementary school and it bit me, it stung me right in the arm. And this other time that I went camp, like I was camping, um, these bees started chasing me and my cousin when we were just walking and it bit my, it, 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 I mean it stung. Um, it stung my cousin on the arm and also on her butt. It was, it was really funny to me. And um, since then, when bees like, started to get near me, I started screaming. And ever since like, bees ever get near me, I started screaming because it, it just scares me. I'm claustrophobic. I'm terrified of small spaces. When I'm in small rooms or around a lot of people, I cry, throw up, then faint. The first time I experienced my claustrophobia was at a wedding. So I'm part Mexican, so this was a real big <laughs> Mexican wedding. It was like everybody was mainly fat, big, and they were all sweaty from dancing. When I came for the bride and groom to give their speech, I felt so small and it was just disgusting. I fainted right on the spot. My mom picked me up, took me outside to get some fresh air, and I started throwing up and I don't know how that's possible because I was kind of like, yeah, I wasn't awake. But yeah. So I have a couple different phobias, but the one that I would say affects me most on sort of a daily basis in my life is my fear of heights. Um, when I was younger, I definitely was not afraid of heights. I would, you know, go, go rappelling off of rocks. I would go on roller coasters. I've gotten older, it's gotten worse and worse. Um, and to the point where I get really frozen whenever I am up high. So for example, I take my freshmen to this ropes course each year, which is um, this really great experience where they're up in the redwoods and they're doing all of these like high ropes things. Um, and the first year that I took them, I decided, well, I'll give this a try. And I got all the way up to the top of this 50 foot platform and just froze. I could not do anything. All of my students were down there. Tell so um, I have a phobia of snakes and it is called ophidiophobia. I'm not sure if that's the way to pronounce it, but that's my phobia. I'm really scared of snakes. I can't see them. If I see them, I will automatically start crying.